Here at Nomad Capitalist, we talk to seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors. But what if you are just starting out and you want to start a business? Should you consider a higher taxed Western country as a way to get your business off the ground? Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, and we do help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you are treated best. But where do you go where you're treated best if you're just starting out in business? Should you consider a country like the United States? Well, that's what Lewis asked. He uh, wrote in a question. He said, here is my question. I see that your advice is tailored for business owners and investors with a high net worth. But what would be your strategy if you were like me, about to get a U.S. green card with a five-figure net worth and willing to start a business from scratch? Would you stay in the U.S.? Would you go and build the business abroad in one of the countries you advocate? Given I have a, and here's the kicker, French passport, would you go through with U.S. citizenship? You see, I have a huge dilemma where I've sacrificed so much the past five years from relationships to money to energy, very important, to get the green card. But now I realize through my travels and experiences that it might not be the right move to stay in the United States. That's from Lewis, and uh, it's a very interesting question. Now, you know, one of the things that he mentioned towards the end there was, should I get U.S. citizenship? Now, if you want to live in the U.S. full-time, uh, having U.S. citizenship, being that the U.S. is, is a bit more um, difficult country to get into. This is not just a country where you go for 90 days, leave for a day, come back in, uh, both from an immigration border perspective or from a tax perspective, it wouldn't be the best idea. Uh, so having citizenship, and I've had a few people that I've worked with over the years where the, the plan was, hey, listen, either cut your ties with the U.S. entirely on a green card or naturalize. You know, don't, don't stay in the mushy middle. Uh, and so you don't have to get U.S. citizenship to have a green card, uh, but certainly it is a permanent residence where they do actually want you to stay there uh, pretty substantially in many cases, unlike other permanent residences. Uh, and so my first thought on this is if I'm a French citizen, I have a green card, I'm not going to pay attention to the sunk cost of the fact that I've spent five years. I understand how it works. Uh, certainly there are things that I wish I would have done differently five years ago, but you know what? I don't waste too much time thinking about it. I don't regret it. I simply figure out where do I want to be now, and I move on. And I think that the, the, what we talk about here at Nomad Capitalist is how can you evolve as a person without feeling shamed, without feeling judged? You know, how do you have options? How do you have the ability to change when circumstances change, whether the country changes, the tax rate changes, the politics change, the hospitality changes, whatever the case may be, you're allowed to make a change. So if I'm a French citizen, I have in, all, in my travels met a number of French citizens and worked with a couple who run remote businesses where they're selling to people who speak French. You know, English is obviously a very widely spoken language. Much of the commerce online is conducted in English. But when you talk to guys who do like SEO, for example, search engine optimization, they will tell you, at least historically, that uh, other languages may be much easier to compete in because so many people are competing in English. You go and open up something in Russian or in Arabic, you may have a better chance of getting traction, getting customers. And if you're from France and if you understand those people, you can market to them. And again, I've seen numerous people who do that. Uh, I've met people in Serbia. I've met people in Turkey. I've met people in Malaysia, uh, in Singapore, in the UAE. Uh, probably, I mean, close to a dozen French uh, speaking people over the years that I've just, you know, happened to run into or occasionally have worked with who were doing this. And so if you can run that remote business from anywhere, why would you want to go to the United States other than, again, the sunk cost fallacy and pay and pay and pay 40 or even 50 percent in some cases in taxes, depending on how business, uh, how big your business becomes? Ask yourself, you know, will I be better off in terms of growing my business if I'm able to pay 5% tax living somewhere in low tax Europe versus paying 40 or 45% tax in the US. And as much people say, oh, life's not about taxes, here's a guy who says, hey, I want to stay in the US only because I put the time in and I've sacrificed relationships. Well, listen, go get the relationships back. Go get your energy back. Um, you know, I'm a pretty go, go, go person, but I think that for some people who maybe are a little bit more laid back, the U.S. probably takes a bit out of you. That's one thing I hear from people all over the world. It's like, oh, the U.S. is all about work, 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 you know, at all costs. Uh, maybe it's better to go somewhere else where you can get a bit of that work-life balance. And you know what? If you're trying to hit certain numbers 
you'll be able to do that faster when you're not giving a country that it sounds like you're not that thrilled about a bunch of your money. Now, this is assuming that you want to run some kind of remote business. I like cash flowing businesses. I like businesses uh, with, with a certain amount of uh, certainty to them. And so I have had businesses that were on the ground at certain times uh, in my business career. I think that's certainly, I have people right now who have put in place management to run their on the ground businesses and then they go out and they can have a somewhat tax advantage structure by the, them being some more low tax and they have a business and there's some ways you can do that. Um, but I, you know, my, go, my advice to you be set up something that you can run from anywhere because again, why not use your skills in fe- speaking to French people? You know, people often ask me, Andrew, why don't you sell into the Chinese market? And I say, if someone from China calls me, uh, we'll consider talking to them. But you know what? There are lots and lots and lots of companies, especially in the immigration business, that sell into China. They know China. They have the connections. And it's just not the kind of area that I'm an expert in. I used to spend a lot more time in China years ago. It's just not an area that I'm an expert in. It's not a market that I want to target. Again, if people come to me, I'll, I'll, I'll take them. But, you know, again, the model where I've got to pay someone some 60% commission for bringing me a client because people don't do business virtually online, that's not a model that I understand as well. If you're French, why don't you leverage that, right? And, and people sometimes, well, you know, you went to, you know, how come you just grew up in France and take and then you go somewhere else, you go to Dubai and you don't pay? I'm sure your family paid plenty of taxes. I know my did growing up. Uh, I went to school. You know what? My parents paid a lot of money in property tax to pay for that education. They paid a lot of money in income tax and all kinds of other taxes. And by the way, so did I. I mean, I'm sure you're not you know, 21 years old. You've paid somebody to France, and now you get to take what it is that you learned. Why wouldn't you use that? Okay. And so if I'm a French citizen, I'm less likely to want to go to the United States. Now, you know, listen, I have friends who are Egyptian. I have friends who are Moroccan, uh, etc. I would... I would be more likely to tell them to go to the United States and pay the tax and work your way towards citizenship. Now, in that case, I was just talking to one of my Egyptian friends the other day. I said, uh, you know, why don't you go to Portugal? Uh, the taxes aren't going to be much worse. Potentially, they could be lower. This, this person happens to be a highly paid uh, freelancer. Uh, but if you have a business, potentially you could pay a much lower rate of tax in a country like a Portugal using one of the tax exemptions in other European countries. I'd probably rather go there first. Uh, now, you're a French citizen, so you already have access to the EU. You don't really need another EU citizenship. I just don't see the value, if I'm a, an EU citizen, of having U.S. citizenship because it's not adding to my passport plan. Uh, if I decide I ever want to leave the U.S., I've got to go through a messy and emotional breakup that I wouldn't have to go through right now. And I don't know why you'd put yourself through that. A lot of people who are from Western countries who go to the United States and be naturalized, I've talked to a number of them, British, uh, Irish, uh, etc. who go to the U.S., they become citizens, and they're like, what? what did I do this for? Now I want to go back to Ireland, and now I've got to fill out all these U.S. tax forms. So if you have a green card, you want to consider the rules at which point, hey, you've had a green card too long. Now this business you're building, which may be online, can't even be very effectively moved from a tax perspective. So understand that there are rules that the longer you have a green card, the more you could be at a disadvantage. Um, I, I just don't see the benefit of when you can come as a French citizen to the U.S., Obviously, right now you need to be vaccinated. You can come for 90 days at a time. You know, as long as you meet the basic criteria, you're not a criminal, that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know why, I don't see too many French citizens not getting in to spend time and to enjoy. If you really want the access beyond just being a tourist and you want to have some kind of on the ground business, you can consider something like an E2 visa, which does not automatically obligate you to become a US taxpayer. And then you can keep your time to a lesser amount of time every year. Um, And I have had people from Western European countries who have been on E2s and they've had more flexibility. I've also had someone in green cards. And again, I told them probably want to go one way or the other, right? So my overall advice is in this day and age, why aren't you building a business that can be virtual, especially if your audience is Western, okay? If your audience is Western, you can be virtual. Why would you want to live in a place that has that kind of tax rate? Because he says, oh, I only have a five-figure net worth. But your goal isn't to have a five-figure net worth forever. This is like people who it's like, uh, listen, I'm going to get married when I'm 18 years old because, uh, hey, listen, uh, you know, I know it may, listen, I'm, I'm never going to be anything anyway. What kind of way of thinking is that? We all started somewhere. I started businesses. I, I had zero dollars to my name. Uh, or maybe I had $10,000 or something I saved up as a kid. Why would you want to put yourself in a position where you have five figures now? Who knows what could happen? How many people during the pandemic started businesses 
or, or had already run a business, and then now they were sitting at home, they had time to work on it, people were buying stuff online, people were you know, playing with apps, and they were in the online sales, e-commerce, the app business, whatever, their, their revenue shot up. You never know when your business could go from being a five-figure business to a seven-figure business, especially if you're on a green card, you could potentially have at some point a tax issue on that. Um, I just don't see the point for Western citizens. Now, do I have a bias? Of course I do, as anyone else does. I left the United States. It wasn't for me. If you love the lifestyle in the U.S. and you want to be a citizen, then go for it. Doesn't sound like that. Sounds like a lot of sunk cost. Sounds like a lot of, uh, you know, where else am I going to go? Well, let me tell you, there's lots of places to go. If you really think that you are American and you belong there, then do it. Listen, for, for a dozen years, I've had a romantic attachment. I haven't spent a lot of time there, but I've had a romantic attachment to Ireland. If you told me I could be an Irish citizen, you know what? Maybe it's worth spending some time there. Certainly, it's worth paying something. You know, If there's a romantic attachment for you, I'm not here to cut that out because, as you said, energy. Energy is important. Being happy is important. But in the grand scheme of things, I always encourage people to consider their options. If you get rid of something like a green card, can you come back? Yeah, quite possibly. Are there other options like E2 that are a little bit more flexible? Yeah. You know, and why aren't you building a business that serves the audience that you know, that you can run from anywhere? There are plenty of places competing for you. And so just on the nature of, again, the energy, why not go someplace where a, the jurisdiction wants you? Why not go someplace where they say thank you? We've gotten calls from high-level politicians in countries where we work that have said, hey, how can we help you? Why don't you go to a country like that rather than going to a country where you have to live in fear about filling out one number wrong on a form? To me, competition is important. We do it in every other aspect of our life. So unless there's this great emotional connection, my advice to you would probably be, why do you need it? Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.